The rapid development of aquaculture industries around the world is one of the great success stories of our time. For the first time ever, there are now more fish being consumed from farms than from wild-caught species. And this trend looks set to continue, offering economic gains for stakeholders across the industry. But with the ever-expanding opportunities offered by aquaculture, there are also risks. Whilst enormous amounts of effort have already been put into creating more sustainable models of aquaculture production, there are still gaps and loopholes. One area that has been frequently neglected until now is that of trash fish, fish species that are too small or unpalatable to be sold for human consumption. Trash fish are often caught using fine mesh trawl nets and in some parts of the world form an important element in aquaculture feeds. But the current use of trash fish in aquaculture feeds poses several problems for the seafood industry. It causes ecological damage to valuable fishing grounds and contributes to major overfishing problems. It is preventing juvenile fish from growing into more commercially valuable adults. Trash fish generate low value products which lock in poverty for fishing communities and can be a barrier to economic development. It may pose a significant obstacle to the certification of aquaculture products. It may pose risks to the reputation of retailers and processors. Researchers that visited fishing ports in Thailand recorded over 50 different species in trash fish containers. These included shark species recognized as vulnerable or near threatened by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Once landed, the trash fish are transported to processing plants close to the port before going on to shrimp feed mills across the country. Many species taken as trash fish are actually juveniles of species that would be valuable eating fish if allowed to grow bigger. ตัวนี้ตัวเต็มที่ประมาณ Trash fish fisheries often have little data on stock status or landings, and management may be limited or non-existent. It's hard to make accurate assessments about actual declines in the commercial value of trash fish fisheries, but some local people believe that they are witnessing a clear trend. This fish mill manager from Renong in northwestern Thailand explained that the amount of fish being landed has dropped dramatically, that for days at a time they have no work to do.
ก็ก็เหมือนกันหมดเพราะว่าตอนนี้นะพูดถึงสภาพตอนนี้เพราะว่าปลาเราได้ปลาสดที่น้อยมากมันเลยนี่จะจะจะน้อยมากเลยไม่เหมือนเมื่อก่อนเพราะฝั่งไทยนี่เราไม่มีปลาเลยยังเมื่อก่อนนะคุณจะนั่งสัมภาษณ์ของอย่างนี้เราไม่มีเวลาจะมานั่งสัมภาษณ์เพราะปลานี่อยู่ทั้งวันทั้งวันทั้งคืนทั้งวันทั้งคืนไม่มีเวลาอยู่แต่ตอนนี้คือบางทีสองวันสามวันมีครั้งเราโม่ไม่ได้If the current pattern of exploitation continues at the same rate, the ecosystems of Thailand and other mixed trawl trash fisheries face continued degradation, which will result in a severely damaged fishing economy and impoverished ecology. The use of trash fish also poses problems for processors and retailers who might require certification of aquaculture products or operate sustainable seafood policies. It's going to be very difficult for the industry to achieve certification under any of the aquaculture schemes if it's using trash fish in shrimp feed. A lot of retailers and processors and others within the supply chain have put a lot of effort into establishing their credentials in terms of sourcing sustainable seafood. If it turns out that the shrimps they're selling have been fed on, for instance, a vulnerable marine species like sharks, that's going to cause an enormous problem to their seafood policy. Well, Sainsbury's has a business value to source all the products we sell with integrity. So for fish, we have a sustainability rating system for both wild capture fisheries and aquaculture operations. And for aquaculture operations, obviously these fish have to be fed, and therefore these operations can have a significant impact on wild fisheries. So sustainable sourcing of aquaculture feeds is an integral part of that assessment process. And without doing that, then we couldn't have a robust position on farm fish. The trash fish problem is complicated, and finding solutions will not be easy. But it is essential that the industry works together to find a way forward. This isn't something that the shrimp sector just has to do on its own. It can work with many stakeholders, retailers, processors, fisheries scientists, NGOs, government officials and so on, can all work together to solve this problem through fisheries improvement partnerships, which are essentially stakeholder groups that can come together to tackle specific fishery issues. Fisheries Improvement Partnerships bring together fishing communities, fisheries scientists, government regulators, retailers and processors to help identify ways for fisheries to improve productivity and reduce ecological impact. Fisheries Improvement Partnerships will create a forum for key stakeholders to share the challenges of improving fisheries, work to identify and collect data for the fishery to support management, build a consensus about simple measures that can deliver real improvements, help identify potential funding sources for future work, Ultimately, the current indiscriminate use of unmanaged trash fish in shrimp feeds is not a sustainable business strategy because it undermines sustainable fisheries, community development, supply chain standards, the productivity of the oceans, and the sustainability strategies of retailers. Working with the entire supply chain, the aquaculture industry can find solutions that meet the needs of a growing aquaculture sector without eroding the fundamental strengths of the business. <laughs>